moment. I want you to open your Bible and turn to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. And uh, just flip there really quick. They'll probably throw it up on the screen for you as well. Um, Psalm 23. And this morning, uh, I want to share with you a message I'm going to entitle, Safe with the Shepherd. Uh, Safe with the Shepherd. Let's read this together. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort. You prepare a feast for me. Oh, he's writing to Singaporeans. Uh, you prepare a feast, he says, in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Can you say amen? Uh, what, what a powerful song. Come on, everybody say amen. What a great uh, word. Uh, I want to share this with you. I want us to pray, and then I'm going to jump into the word this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence that's here uh, today, God, and in every one of our locations. We thank you. This is the day that you have made. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to gather. We thank you, God, for fresh anointing from heaven this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your spirit is here to meet needs, to speak to our hearts, and to touch our lives. So right now, God, we open our hearts to you and we pray. Let your word, Lord, dwell richly inside of our hearts. Come and speak, God, Lord, into the very precise situations of our lives. God, I don't know every need represented here, but you do. And so, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and begin to minister to your people as only you can. God, we welcome you. Lord, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. One more time. Everybody say amen. amen. Safe uh, with the shepherd. Safe with the shepherd. You know, uh, this is, of course, a very uh, famous passage of scripture. It's appeared on many uh, bookmarks over the years, uh, posters, devotionals. Uh, and if you've been in church for any uh, period of time, you're probably a little bit familiar with it. I would, I would guess that many people who are not even believers know Psalm 23. It's very iconic, uh, very dramatic imagery and poetry. And there's just something about it that's so simple and yet so profound. What uh, David begins to write about God. And David, of course, uh, was a shepherd. And when he starts to write about God as a shepherd, it's something that's really near his heart. So he's able to sort of encapsulate some ideas that would be hard for a lot of people to communicate. Uh, and and in contained inside of this psalm, I think, are some really profound revelations about who God is. And, and as I was thinking about this, I realized that, you know, what you know about a person really changes the way that you see them and the way that you relate to them. Are you with me this morning? Uh, when you know something about a person, when you know that person is always late to meet you, it changes the way you see them and the way you relate to them. Maybe you really want to meet for lunch at 12, but you tell them 11.30 because you know they're always 30 minutes late. Am I talking to anyone this morning? <laughs> what, what you really know about a person. Uh, you know, sometimes you just want to be around a certain kind of person. Uh, there's sometimes, maybe you just need to have some fun. I mean, and you know that when you want to have fun, there's some people you will call and some people you would never call. <laughs> Anyone sitting next to the fun person this morning? <laughs> How many? I don't want to show hands, but you know that there's some people that if you sit next to them in church, you get free sweets. <laughs> you get free candy, and you know that hey, this is this, this person is my dealer. They're the one that supplies everything that I need Sunday morning during service. There are they're, they're fun people. Uh, some people. How many of you have a food person? You got when you need good food, you call that person. I need to know, where, where do I find the best way to out? I, I know who to call. I've got a food person. You need a food person in your life. Uh, maybe, you know, there's some people when you just want to be quiet, uh, you just want to chill and kind of relax. Quiet people, they're sort of peaceful. You can go to coffee and just have a chill time. You don't have to say a lot. Those are nice people. Uh, there, there are some people that are always loud, you know, and, and when you want to be loud, you're with them, but when you really want to be quiet, you're just going, I don't want to be around that person right now. 
Uh, how about the person that always pays for everything? Thank you, Jesus, for the person that pays for everything. That when you go to lunch, they say, let me get the bill. And you say, really? Yes. And, and, and they, they just want to pay for everything. And you know, what you know about them, I mean, when you know something about a person, it changes the way that you relate to that person. It changes the way you see them. It changes what you, what you know the experience is going to be like when you're with them. It changes how your expectation is of what's going to happen when you meet up, when you really know them. When you meet someone that you've never had interaction with, you don't know how that conversation is going to go. You, you're not sure how that stranger is going to respond to you, but when you really know someone, it'll change it. And, and this psalm is a profound revelation about the nature of God, about who God really is. David starts to have a revelation about who God is, and, and when he catches it, what he begins to describe changes the way that he relates to God. And I believe today, if we could catch this, it would change the way that you and I see God and the way you and I relate to God, if we could understand who he is. See, when you know him, it changes how you see him. And so I want to give us this morning five revelations about God from this psalm, Psalm 23. All right, five uh, revelations. Actually, let me give you a discount. I'll give you four revelations about God, all right, for the sake of time. And uh, and I want to jump into this today. Say with the shepherd. Look at somebody next to you and say, get ready. Get ready. Look at the other person and ask them, do you have any sweets? <laughs> <laughs> just, just get yourself ready for the sermon. Uh, number one, uh, this all contains a revelation about the person of God. It contains a revelation about his person. And what David says about the person of God is this. It's just so simple. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, this is such a quick phrase, such a short sentence. And yet, it's, I see a lot of sweet press around. It's funny. God bless you. Don't, don't say you came to church and never got anything. No, they're just trying to take everything. Don't be good, sweet. Uh, he, he says, God is my shepherd. And, and you can gloss over that. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want you get in. Most people dwell on the, the more, like, uh, you know, exciting parts. Like, oh, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, that, that kind of attracts us. Like, Lord, and all the darkness, you're, you're with me. But David starts here. He says, God. You know who God is? There's a revelation about who God is. He says, hey, let me tell you about God. Let me tell you about his person. Let me tell you about his nature. Let me give you a revelation about my God, that God is my shepherd. This is how. He says, God is not, he's not just God of force. He's not just a savior. He's not just some kind of power. I mean, many people think God is just some sort of power that you can't really understand. Or comprehend. He says, no, God is my shepherd. Who God is, it's his very nature. And this is interesting because there's a lot of scriptures that refer to us like sheep, right? The Bible says like sheep, we've gone astray. We're the sheep of his pasture. In, in Psalm 97, or 95, verse 7, it says, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Uh, Isaiah 40, verse 11 says, He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are young. And, and these are incredible revelations about how God takes care of us. It's easy to think of ourselves just as sheep, just these lowly little creatures that need help, and truly we are. But David goes home and says, Hey, you know what? It's not just that I'm just a sheep. God is my shepherd. That there's something about God that he relates to me like a shepherd would relate to sheep. And, and what that means when David begins to describe it, think of what a shepherd is to a sheep. What he's saying is, first of all, the presence of God is dependable inside of our lives. Do you realize that today? His presence is dependable. In other words, you don't usually see the sheep just wandering down to McDonald's to get, get a hamburger by themselves. The sheep are always led by the shepherd. And so the sheep, they know wherever they're going, they are going there because the shepherd is taking them there. So in the, in, from the perspective of a sheep, the presence of the shepherd is dependent. 
And when David says, hey, God is my shepherd, he's saying, God is with me. He's around me. He's interested in my life. In other words, the shepherd doesn't just show up randomly. Mm. The shepherd doesn't just appear on occasion. The shepherd doesn't, it's not like you never know when he's coming or not. For the sheep, the shepherd is always coming. He's always coming to lead me to pasture. He's always coming. I know I, I was with the shepherd today. He's going to be with me tomorrow. He's going to be with me the day after that. The presence of the shepherd is dependable because he's intimately involved in the lives of his sheep. And that's his job. That's his role. In fact, you don't even have to care whether the sheep belong to the shepherd or not. Once you are a shepherd, your entire being, your entire personality, and what you're known for is wrapped up in taking care of these sheep. And many times, see, if we have a wrong perspective about the nature of God, of who he is as a person, it affects the way we relate to him. If you don't see God as a shepherd, you're never sure when he's coming and showing up in your life. If you don't see God as your shepherd, you're not sure if you're going to make it to green pasture or not. If you don't see God as your shepherd, you never know what may come. Well, I don't know if God's going to speak to me today. I don't know if he's mad at me or happy with me. I don't know if I'll feel his presence. I'm not sure where he really is. If you feel like that about God, but he just is randomly appearing in your life from time to time for no rhyme or reason, then you won't call on his name or you'll think that you can never get his attention. Have you ever been in a position where you felt like you couldn't get God's attention? Yeah. And David says, hey, let me tell you about God. He's my shepherd. I always have his attention. His attention is entirely upon me because I'm like a sheep and he is my shepherd. In other words, the shepherd is entirely committed to those under his care. It's his, it's his whole duty. It's his entire purpose to ensure that the sheep are provided for, that they eat, that they drink, that they rest enough, that they don't go too far. And imagine this, you know, we're talking about a, a wilderness environment, a desert environment. So to make sure the sheep find pasture, to make sure that they get to water is critical. This is the role of the shepherd. And, and David says he's entirely committed. In other words, he's totally focused on the needs of the sheep. And I came to tell you this morning, church, that you came not just to worship some kind of force or power, not to hear about a God who is far off, but I'm telling you, God is a shepherd that watches over you. He desires to be a shepherd to you today, to, to be intimately involved inside of your life, that you would know he's with you, that you can count on him, that his presence is dependable in your life. Come on, can you say amen this morning? Let me give you a couple of scriptures about this. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, says, says this. Hebrews 7, 25. says, consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. I love this. He talks about Jesus, and he says, you know what Jesus does? He's not able just to give you a nice day in church one time 10 years ago. He's not just able to forgive you once when you first called on his name, but he says he is able to save you to the uttermost. He's able to get you all the way to the end. Why? Because he lives to make intercession for us. That is our God. Totally focused on our needs. I mean, are you going through a rough time this morning in life? Let me tell you something. Jesus is praying for you. Isn't that great? Yes. I mean, some people say, have you ever had that text message? I'll be praying for you. And in the back of your mind, you think, I don't know if that's true. Are you really praying for me? Or is that just something? But the, this, the, the Bible says you can count on it. Jesus is interceding for you. When you're going through turmoil, when you're not sure what the next step is, he says, hey, he can save you to the others. He's praying for you. He's on your side. Totally focused on your life. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Isn't that wonderful? He goes, you got to remember who God is. 
You need to remember that God is your shepherd. And if he gave his only son for you, how would he not give you everything else that you need in life? David goes, I, I, I've got such a revelation about God. He had a revelation that God was his shepherd. Church, I, I don't know how many times you've thought about this, but uh, let me bring you back to it for a moment. God has done so many things for us. He, Romans says he's, he gave his only son for us. Why is it that sometimes I doubt if God's presence is there? Why is it sometimes I'm not sure if really things are going to work out, if God can come through for me? I mean, what else does he have to do to prove that he is good? David says, my God is like a shepherd. He's there, he's focused, he's attentive, he meets the needs of my life, he, he covers me. I know that he's regularly there. He's always next to me because he is the shepherd of my life. The second revelation David then has is he has a revelation about God's provision. About God's provision. Everyone say provision. provision. He has a revelation about provision. He says this, the Lord is my shepherd. And then he says in the New Living, I have all that I need. Um, but actually, I, I prefer the other translations in the New King James or the ESV. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. And he says, I shall not want or I lack nothing. I don't have a need inside of my life. Now, this is a very interesting statement. He goes, because God is my shepherd, there is nothing that I need that will not be provided. I'm going to say that one more time, okay, for those of you that didn't have your coffee this morning. Because God is my shepherd, there is nothing that I need that will not be provided. I don't know everything that you need. I don't know all of the things and demands that are happening inside of your life. But I know that if God is your shepherd, there is nothing that you need that he will not provide for you. And this is what David says. Hey, I like nothing. I will not be in want. In, in other words, when I know he's my shepherd, I know that I'm under his care. Mm. He's concerned for me. Yes. The shepherd's job, in other words, is not just to put on a front. It's, you're not a shepherd because you dress like a shepherd. You're a shepherd because you take care of sheep. Hallelujah. Are you, you, you know, you could dress up uh, like a pastor and kind of look like a pastor on the, and sit on the front row and stuff this morning. But, you know, a shepherd is kind of different. He goes, a shepherd is not just how you look. You need to be surrounded by sheep. You could wear whatever you want. You could have any kind of hair do. You could, you know, have any sort of background. But if you take care of sheep, that is what defines you as a shepherd. Mm -hmm. You meet the needs of them. You take care of the flock. And so David says, because God is my shepherd, I know that I will not lack. I won't want. I shall not want. It literally means to lack or have like a, a need, a, a gap, something missing inside of your life. And it's a very interesting word. In fact, it, uh, in the Hebrew, it's in a certain tense called the omnitemporal tense. This is kind of an exciting word for those of you that are really into the English language. But it means this. It means that it's something that keeps happening. So when he says, I shall not want, you can literally define it this way. I repeatedly have not wanted in the past. I do not want right now in the present. And I will not want in the future. Do you catch that? I, I shall not lack. I, I shall not want. In other words, not just right now. Not just if you feel it, and, and right now everything's okay. He goes, let me tell you about God, my shepherd. In my life, I've not lacked in the past up to now. He brought me to this point. How many of you would say Jesus has brought you this far already? Yes. Come on, give me a wave yes. this morning. He got you all the way here. And he goes, hey, right now, you know what? I, I'm not lacking right now. And so it doesn't matter what it looks like in the future. I know I'm not going to want in future either because God is my shepherd. Somebody yes. shout amen. Yes. You know, that revelation is a really powerful revelation. That I will lack nothing. That I will lack nothing. It doesn't mean that everything is going to go always how you thought it would go. It doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect in your life, but in every situation, at every turn, in every moment, God will provide for my life. Yes. In every moment, he will be enough. Yes. Because he is my shepherd. 
Yes. In, in, in every moment, the Bible says in Corinthians that he leads us in triumphant procession in everything in my life. I'm always walking in victory because God is my shepherd. Hallelujah. You know, when you have a fear in your mind that you're going to lack, it will lead you to, to bad decisions. In fact, the fear of lack is really the root of disobedience and discontent. It's the fear of lack. It's not when you don't love God, you begin to disobey primarily. It's actually when you're afraid you're going to lack something. That will lead you to disobedience. What, where discontentment comes from in your life is a fear of lack. These thoughts, mm. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. Or, or how about this? Not just I don't have enough, I won't have enough. If I, if I continue doing this, I know the Bible says this, but if I obey it, I feel like my needs aren't going to be met. My life isn't going to be good. The stuff that I want isn't going to be there. So I'm so afraid that I'll have a lack. I begin to respond in a way that isn't according to the word of God. The fear of lack. I don't have enough. I, I won't have enough in the future. But how about this? I can't find that if you've got something now you want to hang on to it so bad, whether it's God's will or not, because in my mind, I, I, I'll never get better than what I have right now. Hmm. I could never see something greater than what's in my hand right now. That fear of lack is what begins to breed discontent. And what David's saying is, you know what? Don't forget that God is a shepherd. Don't forget he's the one leading you out to meet the needs of your life. Don't forget that because he's a shepherd, in other words, I can trust where he's leading me. I can trust his word. I can trust his voice that where he's leading me, I'm not going to be in lack of God will provide for my needs. We've been talking about the willing offering, and maybe you've been stirred to give. Maybe you've been stirred and challenged to give. And then there's that, that thought, will I have enough? Will, will there be a lack in my life? Let me challenge you. Don't let the fear of lack rule your life. Let trust in the shepherd begin to rule the decisions of your life. Maybe you sense God calling you to certain things. And then you think, well, if I do that, if I step out, if I, if I go to missions, if I say yes to God, if I step up in this, if I sacrifice that, what will my life be like? Will I have enough? Don't, don't let the fear of lack begin to determine your response. God is your shepherd. And so I can trust in me. You know, what, what David begins to say is, God is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. And then he describes, he takes me to green meadows, flat waters. He makes me lie down. Then he also says, well, sometimes I'm in a valley. Like, it looks like I might die, but God's with me, and it, it's okay. And what he's beginning to say is this, that peace comes from who God is, not from what you have. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah. Let, let me break it down. The sheep don't live in the green pasture. The shepherd leads them to the yes. green pasture. Yes. So if the sheep are walking in the wilderness and they look around, they're like, one sheep says to the other sheep, well, I don't know about this. I think the shepherd doesn't know what he's doing because all I see is rocks. Come on, let's, let's yeah. go over that way. They just take off, you know. Like, I, I don't trust this guy. It just looks like sand. This shepherd's an idiot. He mm. doesn't know where he's going. But the shepherd knows, hey, we've got to walk through sometimes the desert, but I'm getting you to a pasture. I'm getting you to somewhere where there's a no. Thank you. Well, how about in our, have you ever been in a place where it looks like it's dry, it looks like there's nothing here? I'm not sure if I really try, if I really follow God, it looks like he's leading me into nothing, but you gotta remember God's your shepherd. Yeah. He doesn't come to take he came to give. He gave his he gives his life, gives us the spirit, supplies us with strength. This is our God. Peace comes from who God is. That even when I'm in the desert, I know, well, you know what? I'm in a desert, but the shepherd is with me, and he knows what he's doing. Yeah. I, I'm in a desert right now. I'm in a wilderness. It doesn't look good, but the shepherd is with me, so we're going to get to the pastures. He's going to give me everything that I need. I, I know you're ready. Where he leads, there will always be enough. In other words, no matter where I am right now, I know what's coming because I know who he is. Yeah. That is really what our relationship with God should look for. You know, your relationship with God uh, and my relationship with God is founded on faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. Say it with some gusto. Come on, shout faith. 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 It's predicated on faith that I believe what God said. I believe in who God says he is in the Bible. That he's a savior. Come on, amen. Yeah. 
In fact, Hebrews says if anyone wants to come to God, you have to believe that he is and that he's good. That he's a rewarder of those that seek. So my relationship with is based on faith. But you know what faith really ends up being? Faith in my life is really about obedience. Faith isn't a feeling. It's not just a belief. Faith becomes real faith when it requires obedience. It requires obedience. That shows the faith of my life. Obedience comes from trust inside. He knows where the water is. He knows where the pasture is. He says he lets me rest. And that leads me to peaceful streams. He renews my strength that he can restore me. He cares deeply about my heart beyond what other people see. Sometimes we need restoration in our life. So God's a shepherd. He's a shepherd. He's not just trying to harm me. No, he cares. He understands. And he's going to make sure that, that those needs inside of my life are met. But see, he leads me in his way. He says he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name sake. The paths of righteousness. That it's not that he, wherever you go, that that's a righteous path. It's that the shepherd knows where those paths are and he takes you to them. Well-worn paths. Paths that have already been carved out through the ages. Says, come on, come on, get in this lane. Come over here. Make these kind of decisions. Make, make these kind of choices. He begins to lead and lead inside of our life. And what that means is what happens is he leads us where he wouldn't normally go on our own. I wouldn't normally forgive. Come on. You ever just wanted to be angry? I mean, just, you know, you have to forgive. Like, can I just be angry for five more minutes? <laughs> you know? Really mad about this. I, I wouldn't normally. Maybe you wouldn't normally feel like worship. Maybe you wouldn't normally try. Maybe you wouldn't normally overcome temptation. But he says he's going to lead me in his way, paths of righteousness. And, and you and I have to begin to discern. Sometimes that, that little resistance inside our heart, that bit where we and she don't want to go where the shepherd is leading. This, this is where I want to lead. I, I don't know about that. This is what I'm asking. Well, I, I'm not sure. That, that looks like a desert. I, I don't know. You've got to discern that and then come back to this point of saying, God, you're my shepherd. I trust you. You're my shepherd. I trust you. That I stop trying to make all the decisions for myself. I want to go by what you're saying. I want to go by what you're leading. I want to go by what you've taught me. Lord, I believe you're the shepherd of my life. With you, I'm safe. With you, I'm secure. With you, I have everything that I need. Can you say amen? Here's number three. Uh, the third revelation David begins to give about God. It's not just about his person and his provision, but thirdly, his protection. His protection. He begins to carry on. He says, you know what? Uh, even though I walk through the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death, he's describing something so dark that you don't know what's, what could be out there, that there's a danger, there's a fear that you might be attacked in God. He says, I will not be afraid, for you're close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast in the presence of my enemies. He starts talking about the protection of God. And so the revelation of God as a shepherd, this is this is really cool. Watch this. David is starting to describe God. Hey, God is my shepherd. He writes this beautiful poem. Right? David's a songwriter. So he's like writing this, this beautiful song for people to sing maybe when they come to the temple when there's a feast day. God is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? He makes me lie down in free pastures. Everyone starts lifting their hands. You know, he <laughs> leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then something happens right here. Something happens. He gets so caught up remembering who God is. Oh, God, you're such a great shepherd. Lord, you always provide. Right? You're always with me. You're dependable. Your presence is there. And, he, and, and all of a sudden, he breaks character, and he stops writing a song, and he starts talking about himself. Right? The first part is the Lord does this. He does this. He does that. And all of a sudden, he shifts, and now he applies it to his own life, and he says, you know what? I can't hold it in anymore. God, I'm not going to be afraid because you're with me. Yes. You're with me. Now he starts talking about me. I will do this. I will. Do, he does this for me. It's like David's so excited, he can't contain anymore this revelation that, God, you're my protector. When I walk through the darkest valley, you are with me. I won't be afraid. You are close beside me. He starts to begin to make it personal in his life. 
And, and what he says is, look, the valley is real. Darkness is real. I mean, there's times you don't know what's coming on the other side. There, there's real situations, real problems in this, in this fallen world. There are issues that are But he says, God, I won't be afraid because you're with me. Because you're with me. You know that who you're with is more important than where you are? Mm -hmm. You realize that? Who you're with is always more important than where you are. We have three kids. When my kids get afraid, you know what is funny? They can be so scared inside their room. They woke up, up they saw a wolf or something. You know, it's maybe like a, a chair in the corner. And, and what they'll do is they'll begin to call. They don't just scream, woo, ah. They don't call 995. They start crying out. Mommy! <laughs> they are convinced that if there was a wolf, a bear, a badger, I don't know, no matter what it is, somehow mommy could deal with it. <laughs> and they don't, they don't usually run out of the room. This is funny. They don't run out of what they're afraid of. They just call someone in to the problem with them. And I think kids are onto something. They go, it doesn't matter. I can stay right where I am, and it's really bad, but if mommy was here, everything would be okay. And David says, hey, you could be in the darkest time, but if you would remember who you're with is much more important than where you are, you're going to be okay. Yeah. That, that maybe, maybe it is. Maybe you've been jobless. Maybe it seems like things in your relationships going south. Your emotions are all pent up. You need to remember that God is with you. Yeah. That he's on your side. Well, I came to remind you that God is with you. Yeah. We, we get so caught up about our environment and about what's happening. David is describing this thing. It's not qualified. It doesn't matter how you got into the situation. God can bring you through. If God is with you. In other words, He is the solution. Your environment isn't the solution. The people around you are not the solution. You try to figure out all your that's not the solution. He says God is the solution. God's way, His time, His principles. I want to make God the solution for mine. Here's the last one. Uh, is, is that it's not only his person, his provision, his protection, but finally, there's a revelation about his presence. A revelation about his presence. I'm going to invite the worship team to come. A, a revelation about his presence. He says, you know what? You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings starts to describe what would happen if you were welcomed into a host's home and how they would treat you and prepare for you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that enemies are all looking on. I, I'm renewed, I'm refreshed, I'm sustained, I'm protected because of the presence of God. I believe this morning across all the regions, the presence of God is here today. And there are many of us today, you need a fresh anointing to come Thank you, Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit to come and touch you in a way that no one else could. That Maybe there are difficulties and situations you're facing, but the answer is not in trying to solve it on your own. The answer is in drawing near to the shepherd. That hesitation that sometimes comes in our life, that, that unwillingness.